This is an example to demonstrate single objective optimization for generative design in Revit. In this example file, we have the basic sample project uh, just with an additional family loaded. This family has a few parameters for us to use for things like angle or rotation of the umbrella. In our case, we want to use this to optimize for the solar values on the tabletop and the chairs. So we want to try to place the table the best way possible to have the most shading available to us. Of course, generative design is driven by a dynamo graph, so we do have that open as well. Uh, within this dynamo graph, we do have a few inputs that we can use. We have the table as an input, and that's toggled with is input, the rotation, and the angle. And both of these are inputs as well. Within the dynamo graph, we have logic of extracting the table geometry uh, versus the umbrella geometry. So we have the option to specify both pieces of geometry to then create the solar study. This graph does use the solar analysis for dynamo package, and it relies pretty heavily on the generative design in Revit nodes. Uh, primarily the data.gate node and the remember nodes as well. So you cache this data for us for use in generative design in Revit. The data.gate node is really, really special because it lets us wait to set parameters or create Revit elements until we're done and satisfied with the run that we created. So it's kind of like a read-only state for Revit, if you will. In Generative Design for Revit, we'll see that the button that corresponds to data.gate is actually called Create Revit Elements. Uh, so we'll break that down a bit further when we get into Generative Design in Revit, uh, the UI. So within this graph, we have notes explaining what's going on and everything like that. Uh, the portion that does a lot of the work is this Analysis.Analyze node. Uh, so this is pretty important because that's how we generate a solar study. We then preview the results in the background preview to see if we're satisfied and we can then commit those changes to Revit as well. So as you can see within uh, the generative design tools, I do have this already saved uh, to uh, generative design in Revit to create studies from. So we'll just go ahead and close Dynamo for this sample. From here, we can go ahead and navigate to the Manage tab and the Generative Design panel to create study. Once the Create Study window opens, we do have a few options. I have a few additional graphs in here as well, but we are going to click on the Optimize Umbrella Orientation. From here, we do see our input parameters. In our case, we have the Select Table parameter. This sample file already has this table selected and we have the variables of the angle and the rotation to choose from. We are also able to save some of these settings if we click on these three dots to the default. So if you like a different setup where you have constraints or constants in here, you can set those and save those as well. So that is a fairly new feature, which is pretty awesome. In our case, we want to optimize based on our solar values, which is an output in our dynamo graph. We want to optimize that to be minimum. So what we're going to do is go to optimize. Our goal is that average solar incidence. Uh, we're going to select minimize. We're going to iterate through these variables. We'll go ahead and leave the rest of these settings and we'll save this as our default settings as well for next time. From here, we'll go ahead and click on Generate and let the solver start to run in the background to produce results for us. As the solver runs, we'll start to see the preview image available to us. Uh, we can select it and kind of navigate around it to see what it's doing as well. Uh, by the end of the run, we will be presented with the optimal solution though. When the analysis is complete, we will see a green check mark next to that run. Specifically, in this case, it was run 15 that I ran. And we can select this result and view the values in the browser. 
So in our case, the dark blue values would be where there are there's more shade, and the kind of brighter, hotter values are where there's going to be more sun. So you can see kind of the results we've, we've gotten with these values. Uh, in this case, since we ran an optimize, we have the one result, and we do have our values that it picked for us when it ran the solver. So in our case, an umbrella angle of 9.5 and an umbrella rotation of 36.4 works really well for us. Rather than come into Revit and type those values in ourselves, we can actually just click on Create Revit Elements right inside of Generative Design in Revit. So let's go ahead and click that and see what happens. So you'll see the viewport update and we can go in and compare what values we have. So we'll select our table and zoom in a little bit. And we'll see that we have a little bit of shade on that part of the uh, table or the chair. We have this one in full shade. We'll navigate around. And this one in partial shade. So if we also navigate in Generative Design in Revit, we'll see that those results match pretty darn closely. Uh, we do map these out a little less dense than the shadows would be, but we do have those values available to us now. So rather than solve that for what I wanted, and once again, this is kind of a simple example, we were able to automatically set those parameters uh, based on a Revit family. So don't let the Create Revit Elements button uh, confuse you, making you think that it always has to create things. We can also update elements or relocate them as well. Uh, this specific example made use of the data.gate node, the remember nodes, and it used a custom Python node, which is in the sample file for you, that pulled this time of day from the active Revit model. So if we go to sun settings, we are pulling this time of day and location from the file as well. So there it is, a real quick overview of how to drive a Revit family with generative design in Revit to perform a single objective optimization. Thanks.